Good afternoon. Welcome to Finding Happiness in Hard Times. My name is Ken Burtness, and I'm coming to you from Hale Eva out at the North Shore. Today, we're going to revisit uh, what we did last week, and that is we're going to go back uh, and try to give support to the people of Maui uh, that are facing the difficult task of rebuilding. Um, today, uh, I'm very, very fortunate to have as a special guest my friend, Elima Stern. Uh, Elima is a teacher, uh, and she's a writer, and she is also a chanter. Welcome to the show, Elima. Hi. Hi, Ken. <laughs> uh, Elima and I have been friends for a long time. We both go to the Windward Community College writing retreat nine times out of the year, uh, and it's always a pleasure. Uh, and one of the things that I look forward to most at the writing retreat is Lillian often asks Elima to start us off to begin the writing retreat with a chant. And every time Elima has done that, it causes my heart to swell and certainly gets me in the mood for writing. And I've always really appreciated that. And so I've asked Elima to come here today to give support to the people of Maui through her chanting. Um, and I just most appreciate you being here, Elima. And Elima has said that she would start the show with a chant. So Elima, I'm turning it over to you. Okay, the chant I'm going to do is called Na'o Makua. It's an ancient chant. It can be found in David Marlowe's Hawaiian Antiquities. And the translation I'm going to read to you is from the Edith Kanaka'ole Foundation. Ye ancestor deities from the rising to the setting of the sun, from the zenith to the horizon, ye ancestral deities who stand at our back and at our front, Ye gods who stand at our right hand, a breathing in the heavens, an utterance in the heavens, a clear ringing voice in the heavens, a voice reverberating in the heavens. Here come your progeny, Maui Nui Akama. Safeguard us, growth to the heavens, growth to the, to the earth, growth to, growth to Hawaii chain of islands. Grant us knowledge, Grant us strength, grant us intelligence, grant us divine understanding, grant intuitive insight, and grant mana. Na auma kua mai kala hiki a kala kau mai kaho uku ia kaha la vai. Na auma kua yaka hina kua yaka hina alo yaka a kau ikalani o ki ha ikalani o we ikalani nu du lu ikalani. Ka holo i kalani, e a ka pula pula a o ko o maui nui a kama, e malama o ko i a mako, e ulu i kalani, e ulu i ka honua, e ulu i ka pai aina o Hawaii, e ho mai ka ike, e ho mai ka ikaika, e ho mai ki a ka mai, e ho mai ka mau koko pono, e ho mai ka ike pā pā lua, e ho mai ka mana, a mama ua noa. Is free. Thank you, Elima. That was terrific. Uh, <laughs> and right to the point for support and uh, for the people of Maui. And thank you for that. Uh, maybe a good place to start on the show today is to tell us a little bit about how you became a chanter, how you arrived at uh, chanting, because I know it's an interesting story. Um, I came to chanting through hula, and I came to the hula to learning Hawaiian language. In the 70s, when the Hawaiian Renaissance became, you know, was happening, uh, my sister Haunani and I, and along with our grandmother, who was not allowed to speak Hawaiian as a child, we took beginning Hawaiian from Lokomaika'i Snakenburg uh, at an adult community, um, you know, studio, at an adult community education. And so, um, this is how we got into learning Hawaiian. And through there, I got into hula. And along with my sister, we got into chanting. And chanting kind of spoke to me. It made me feel good about it, doing it. And I learned so much, you know, while learning the chants and about my own history and my own culture. So that's why I became so interested in chanting. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of chanting in Hawaii, about how that, you know, because it's been with us a long time, right? 
Yes, it's been with us a very long time. Ancient Hawaiians chanted to greet the day, to greet the dawn. They chanted at the birth of a, a, a child. They chanted when a house was completed. They chanted to ask for strength. And they chanted whenever they entered the ocean and they en entered the forest to collect greens for making lei and for their altars. They chanted, you know, for ask asking our gods and our deities for help, but they also chanted to say thank you for all of these wonderful blessings that have been poured upon us, you know. You know, the, what really touches me is the, you know, the part where you talk about how chanting is a request for strength. And certainly, uh, I think that's the case with the people in Maui today and the case for all of us during these hard times is to <clears throat> look for and find strength. And certainly a chanting is a wonderful, wonderful way to do that. Yes. The, uh, tell us a little bit about the training for this because that's something that you know I've always been interested in because uh, I've done some amateur acting, including uh, a number of plays here in Hawaii. And one of the first things I learned when I was studying acting was how to project. And uh, I was always envious of your chanting because, uh, you know, they told me when I was training as an, uh, as an actor to be able to reach the last seats in the house. Well, you certainly always outdo me. You reach way beyond the last seats in the house. Uh, <laughs> So I've always I've always wondered what kind of training that uh, that you were able to do to to have that full sound come up in the chant uh, and reach out to everybody who uh, is listening and move everybody uh, like you move us at the writing retreat when you you chant for us. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, I'm certainly not an actor, but I do I heard about projection um, when we when you learn chant. I've had several chant teachers. They tell you to breathe from your diaphragm, like you do when you have to sing, sing you know, in choral. I, I was uh, in the Kailua High School chorus. Yeah, so um, they tell you to breathe from your diaphragm and diaphragm and to bring it up. Um, also, they tell you to allow the breath to hit the top of your head, you know, just project it there, okay? And then what they, tell you to do is go to the ocean and try to chant over the waves that are beating on the shore. And that's one thing that you know I've, I've done and I've tried to do. They also tell you that if you are in a room um, and chanting, that you need to, like you said, project your voice to the very last of people sitting in the last row or the farthest people away from you try to get your voice to reach those people. Um, at one hula workshop I went to, we were in a place near, near the ocean. Like, I can't remember it was exactly, but like near the docks on the Honolulu Harbor. And um, this is with the Kanaka Oles. And so um, they told us we were standing at one pier and to reach our voices across to the pier across from us. And that's what we tried to do, all of us that were with there learning to chant. So if you need to work on your breath and you need to work on your breathing. And another thing chanting does is it helps you with your breathing. It helps you become a uh, better, stronger, having a stronger breath, you know, getting your breath to come out stronger. So. They, it works together. Breathing and chanting go together very, very well together. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And in fact, uh, living out on the North Shore, and I live very close to the ocean, I live one house away from the ocean. And I've spent over 40 years walking the beach. And uh, a lot of important events in my life have been at the beach. And that beach out there in front of my house, the Keiki Beach, is in the winter very loud. <laughs> the yeah, surf yeah. is coming in and it's going, 
boom, you know, and, and it's uh, it's hard to uh, hard to understand uh, that I could stand there uh, and do that and and over you know <laughs> over voice the ocean, but uh, <laughs> you know the one thing that the ocean does for us in the islands is uh, I think for all of us is it gives us a feeling of the Aina. It gives us, we're so with uh, everything. Um, it's just a very uh, spiritual experience to be at the beaches here, uh, not only on Oahu, but certainly, of course, on Maui and uh, Hawaii and uh, the Big Island and, and all the, uh, the neighbor islands, um, which I've had the pleasure of, of being on. Um, but uh, it's just amazing. And that sort of brings me to my next question, Alima, is uh, I've always been impressed with the uh, connection to spirituality that, ch that chanting has and how it helps you feel spiritual. It reaches your heart and it reaches your spirit and it reaches your soul. And I was going to ask you uh, to talk a little bit about that. Okay. Um, chanting is spiritual, and for me, it, it does fill my, fill my spirit, you know. Um, I was told by uh, one of my chanting teachers, Kumu Linchenko, well, my sister and I were in class together with him, so he told us that when we stand and are ready to open our mouths and chant, we are not standing there by ourselves. We have an ancestor on our shoulder, sitting there with us and helping us and giving us the strength to chant. So whenever I'm asked to chant, I put that in my mind. I remember that. I remember what Kumu Lenchenko told us, that I, I look over and I think my ancestor is here with me and I gather strength from that, you know. And so when I open my mouth, I realize that it's not just me chanting, but it's my ancestor or ancestors along with me. So it's very spiritual. It fills me. It's something that I do all the time because I'm a hula teacher. I teach chant along with hula in my classes. And when I prepare to teach a new chant for, to my students, I make sure that they understand all the history and the culture, the meaning behind it, so that they're not just learning words, but they're learning what comes with all of these words. And that, I think, helps them to get that across in their chanting. And it helps me to get it across in my own chanting. I think that's, you know, that certainly so important the fact that uh you know that you're not doing this alone when you're when you're chanting uh and that you're passing it on to uh the next generation that's just such a, a wonderful thing um i know that uh you know i mentioned going to the ocean uh like you did in your training uh when i go out to my beach uh i'm never alone uh not only are there tourists and locals out there, but they are my the people that are important in my life. Uh, my dad's ashes are scattered on my beach, off my beach, and uh, my daughter was baptized on my beach, uh, and uh, and I'm sure that's not uncommon among uh, all of us here in Hawaii. Is that uh, everywhere we go? Uh, there is somebody traveling on our shoulder, like you say. Yes. Um, and uh, it's very, uh, it's very moving. I um, think, yeah, I think, and, you know, because you're at Keiki, I, I've experienced Keiki Beach. We did a wedding there, my sister and I, one of our hula, one of our hula students, you know, years ago. So I think it would, you should go down and practice trying to getting your voice over those waves because they're very powerful. When I tried to do it, I went to Kailua Beach because I'm a Kailua girl, grew up in Kailua. And so there were, you know, people walking on the beach 
uh, in front of me. And I stood there and opened my mouth and chanted and um, I'm like, you know, do I want to be careful? You know, do, but it didn't intimidate me. I just opened my mouth and chanted and they looked over and they thought, well, what's this woman doing? You know, what's she doing? But Kailo Beach is, is very calm most of the time. So it's not like Keiki, like, you know, where you are. But, and about your father's ashes, my sister, you know, I know you know my sister died recently and we spread her ashes at Kailo Beach. That's where we grew up and where we spent a lot of time in the ocean out there. So there's that connection too. And she always felt that going to the ocean was very important for all of us. You know, it calms you, it fills, fills your spirit, like what you were talking about. And it's just a very important part of living here in Hawaii. Oh, it is. And uh, that's interesting. I, you know, I hadn't realized uh, that you had you know, had been at a wedding up at Keiki Beach, and that's uh, that, that's great uh, because I spend a fair amount of time at Kailua Beach. Uh, oh, I have a men's group that meets uh, every other Sunday, uh, and we meet at uh, our leader, so to speak. His house is right on the beach. Uh, his yard extends to the beach, so um, at the men's group starts at uh, 907 on Sunday mornings, every other Sunday morning. So I always get there early and I help set up and I help prepare some a little bit of food for the uh, for the people who are coming. But that gives me time to go down for 15 or 20 minutes and just sit on Kailua Beach and just uh, enjoy that terrific view there and uh, and the wonderful people passing by I even wrote a story about uh, all the people passing by because there was everybody, you know, it was people came in ones and twos and threes. They came with dogs. Um, they were running by, jogging. They were walking by. They were picking up trash, Some, you know, sometimes are looking for, you know, things at the ocean, at the surf, or, or just cooling their feet in the surf. And it was such a community down at Kailua Beach that I always felt, even though I was visiting from the North Shore, I always felt very, very at home and uh, very comfortable and uh, at one with the people. And there's a lot of people. My friend tells me that he's out very early, you know, like six o'clock or something, uh, jogging or walking on the beach. And even then, there are people there who are just uh, being at one with that beach over at Kailua. It's very special. You might have seen my sister. She was she would pick up trash on Kailo Beach. That's wow. what she Yes, <laughs> you might have seen her there. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> uh, maybe you, you know, with all your, you know, the work that you do and uh, the contact that you have with the people here through hula and chanting and everything, uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about um, how people have felt or been affected by what has happened at Maui and and uh, maybe share a little bit about how uh, our concern and our love and our aloha for all the the people over there and and the difficulty that they're facing now. So many people here have relatives on Maui. You know, my husband has three relatives there. He has a niece. He has uh, an uncle and he has an auntie. And this uncle was living in, near uh, Lahaina in the homestead area. We found out we were worried that, you know, we didn't, couldn't hear from, it, for it, from any of them. But we found out that his house, uh, one wall of his house burned down. But he is lucky that he just has to, you know, renovate and rebuild just by you know adding uh, replacing that one wall but there's so many people that have you know been are now homeless and are living in hotels and living in tents and so uh, the people uh, that I work with um, that I teach at my halal um, we have we help how the vigil you know just by chanting and by um, spreading 
trying to reach Maui with our spirits. You know, um, like you saw at the writing retreat, so many people are writing about Maui and getting that out, you know, and trying to reach Maui in that way. Alex, that you, someone read his, um, his essay. It is a wonderful essay. I heard him read it at the writing retreat. And I think that um, a lot of these people should be writing to the newspapers and telling their stories, their Maui stories, and letting them be known. There's so many um, people that want to donate. Um, the woman who was my, my sister's best friend is back in um, Opelika, Alabama. And okay. she called me and said, she hadn't heard from so many people, but they remembered that she lived on in Hawaii and she's heard from people who she's never heard from in years. And they're all saying they are, they are feeling for Maui. They are feeling so sad about what they see and hear that had happened on Maui. And they're asking about ways to contribute and ways to help. So I told her, I said, you know, they're overwhelmed with donations right now. The best way to contribute is by donating money through the Red Cross or other um, well-known agencies, you know. But I mean, Opelika, Alabama, the people there are in sympathy to Maui. Yeah. So. I think uh, one thing that, uh, you know, we don't, we tend to forget that, uh, and what you're saying is that the islands reach out to the mainland. Um, That's and right. we have so many connections uh, there. Um, one of my good friends that I've known for, well, I, I hate to say how many, I, she would probably be upset if I said how many years I've known her, but she's always lived in California, but she's danced hula for over 30 years in, the hala, in a halau there. And uh, I'm hoping to, you know, one day be able to get her halau to uh, dance via Zoom for us, um, because uh, they and all the other people that are connected with hula, uh, and there are so many halau's all through the United States, um, and she's been dancing, uh, you know, forever, and it gives her joy, and uh, you know, and all of these people want to uh, to reach out and and you know, and give their aloha to uh, and support to the people of Maui. Um, two weeks ago, when we had that show that you're talking about, where uh, Penny read Alex's uh, poem there, uh, we were able to read eight of them, but there were a number of other ones that uh, uh, I'm still uh, getting uh, submissions. Uh, people are sending me their poems and stories as well. And uh, if anybody in the audience is interested uh, what we're going to try to do, if there's an interest there, is to put them in some sort of form, either uh, a digital form or a book form, and to make them available to people. So if anybody in the audience is interested, let uh, Think Tech Hawaii know, and uh, so we can work on that project. Because like Elima said, so many people wrote, and so many people wrote moving things, because the emphasis was on we couldn't reach out and put our arms around the people of Maui at that moment. Uh, being in Hawa Oahu, uh, we could send a message from our heart. And that's what I think the people of the writing retreat did was they reached into their heart and tried to express their feelings of support and aloha to those, those who were affected so, you know, so tragically by this, these wildfires. Well, our show is running a little down, so I'm going to stop talking. And uh, Elima has a wonderful chant for us to, uh, to finish off, and she'll tell us a little bit about the chant, and she'll uh, give us that that wonderful chant of uh, of hope for uh, the people of Maui. This chant is called Uau Hawaii. It was written by Larry Kimura, who teaches at UH Hilo. And the melee to it, the melody to it, was put to it by Kalena Silva, who also teaches there. So I'll tell you the you know, translation. The announcement of dawn appears as a glowing streak upon the heavens. It is a narrow opening in the darkness heralding the day. It is a messenger of the purple glimmer from the east, 
streaks of red stained long cloud formations, reposing serenely upon the pillars holding up the heavens. I turned to gaze upon this, focusing on the growth and the rising of a new day. Yes, day has arrived. Bestow upon us your radiant light. Here upon the earth, filled with the spirit of light, Hawaii is in the brightness of day. It shines brilliant. From its boundaries, from the east to the west, it wears as its finery a myriad of knowledge, of deep insight from the depths of antiquity. My sole duty is to embrace and to cherish, so it may be firm in the repositories of enlightenment. Yes, day has arrived. This is a poem for Hawaii, which has seen the light of day. for that chant and thank you for being on the show that was wonderful uh and we're out of time uh so uh i wanted to thank uh of course Elima, and i wanted to thank uh, the people at think tech hawaii uh for all that they do and support us uh jay and carol and uh, haley and to michael of course um it's always wonderful to be here and uh with them uh and thanks especially to the people who are with us uh joining us through this uh this zoom presentation and uh we wish you the best uh for the coming days and we will see you in two weeks at the same time in the same station aloha <laughs>